Luke Cook left Balkata for Thailand over a decade ago in search of a new life. And he got it, living in luxury in Pattaya, acquiring a hotel, a restaurant, a bar, even a massage parlour. Well, it was a bit of fun for me, really. Uh. Now, the father of three and his Thai wife are on death row. Does your son deserve to die? This video is based on a true story about a couple and two others. All four were sent to death. What happened and how did they escape death row in a foreign country? Two bags of ice, also known as crystal meth, were washed up on a beach in Rayong in the Gulf of Thailand. This brings us to where it all started. Six months after, authorities found the two bags of crystal meth washed up on a beach. In Pattaya, Australian Hills Angels member Wayne Schneider was found dead outside Pattaya City in a shallow grave. Local police wanted to know who carried out the killing, what was the reason, and was there any connection between Schneider and the 500 kilogram of drugs washed up on that beach. Two years later, in December 2017, Thai police linked the two incidents. They arrested a Australian offshore worker, Luke Cook, and his Thai wife. Police raided many properties belonging to Cook and his Thai wife. They confiscated items worth around 30 million baht, which is around 800 to 900 thousand US dollars. They include houses, three condo units in Pattaya, high-end vehicles, motorbikes, firearms, cash, and yachts. Thai police also arrested a American. His name was Tyler Garad for allegations in the drug trafficking conspiracy that led to the killing of Hills Angels associate Schneider. A year later, in November 2018, Wayang Provincial Court read the verdict sentencing the three defendants to death. According to allegations by Thai police, they found 500 kilograms of drugs being dumped into the sea. But in recent reports and in recent news, they changed that to 50.4 kilograms of the drugs being dumped into the Gulf of Thailand. Okay, so I want to uh, pause the video for a second here because I'm editing this video and I want to make a quick uh, correction. So if you look here at the top, it says uh, 500 kilograms of crystal meth. That's how much the alleged cook had on his yacht and they alleged that he threw it over his boat. However, they can't prove that. Um, that's more like her say. They can only prove that there, there were 50.4 kilograms of drugs found on that beach in Rayong. And that's, that's it. That's all they found. I just want to correct that. 500 kilogram allegations, but they only found 50.4 kilograms of drugs on that beach. And back to the video. It was been reported that Coke plead guilty to several counts at that time. There's a pretty good reason why he pleaded guilty, which I'll talk about in a moment. All three, Cook, his wife, and the American Tyler Garad, were found guilty in the Thai court, and they appeal to have their death sentences reversed. However, information from the Thai police at the time shows a far more complicated picture. The three defendants' appeal were denied by the Thai Court of Appeal in Wayang province. Paul Cook says his son's last hope was an appeal scheduled for March 26. But two weeks ago, his lawyer claims the 36-year-old was pulled from his Chonburi jail cell with no warning and thrown before a court. How can this appeal be handled in such a way? with no legal representation, with no family support. Was that fair? The court read the appeal verdict in February 2020. The court ruled that all three defendants should continue to be put on death row. Similar to other Western nations, Thailand also has a Supreme Court. Desperate and low on options, the three, or now the three convicted drug smugglers can file a appeal with the Supreme Court. However, the Supreme Court must agree to hear the case on its merits before they allow the appeal to proceed. 
if they appeal to the Supreme Court and that fail also, along with other appeal process, the only remaining option for the three defendants is to get a pardon from the king. If that's successful, they would be removed from the death row but likely remain behind bars for life. Before we continue with this story, I wanted to know like the chances of a foreigner in Thailand or being sentenced to death in Thailand, what are their chances of being like actually executed inside the country? So here's what I found. Here's the total number of execution inside the country in the past 20 years. As you can see, it is extremely rare for any foreigners to get executed inside the country. You have to be the worst of the worst. Usually non-Thai national, what they do is they get life in prison or they may get deported or extradited back to their home country and then serve time there. Thai police say motorcycle gang Hell's Angels paid Cook 10 million US dollars to smuggle the 500 kilo haul from China. So what happened to Schneider? How was he connected with the drug that was washed up on the beach and how he was connected to Cooked and why they killed him? The story goes that Thai police allege at the beginning of 2015, so this is before the drug found on the beach and before Schneider was killed, Cook was alleged to obtain 10 million US dollars from the late Schneider to purchase 500 kilograms of crystal meth on international seas, store in Thailand, and then later shift to uh, Australia. It was alleged that the Hills Angels in Australia were responsible for providing the funding. Thai police allege in the early hours of June 22, 2015, Cooked allegedly picked up the drugs in international waters near the eastern seaboard of the Gulf of Thailand using his yacht that he purchased called Jomandi. Police allege the yacht was seen by Thai police patrol boat as it was making its way back to Ocean Marina in the Saptihip district of Shibari province. They said that the police boat searchlight shone on a yacht and they alleged that they saw a man dropping packages into the sea. The yacht fleed the scene and no one was arrested or caught at that time. The following morning, locals found four yellow sacks. It was later confirmed that the content inside those yellow sacks was crystal meth. Police alleged that after the unsuccessful drug delivery, Schneider asked Cook to repay the money. They also alleged that both Schneider and Cook were Hell's Angels motorcycle gang members in Australia. Is there any chance, Paul, that you might just be a dad who loves his son so much that you might be a little bit naive to the fact that he could have done the wrong thing? I can say now, my son is no Hell's Angel. He has not ever been associated with a group like that. Luke Cook is still on death row. So is his Thai wife. A American Tyler Garad was arrested while leaving the country. Garad confessed he and four other men abducted and killed Schneider. The second man who was detained by Thai police was a infamous Australian underworld figure named Antonio Bagnado. Bagnado was originally a bodyguard of Schneider. Bagnado was alleged of kidnapping, torturing, and killing Schneider. At the time, Bagnado was also wanted in connection with another murder in 2014 in Sydney, but after that he fled to Thailand. When the Thai authorities wanted Bagnado in custody for his alleged connection with the killing of Schneider, Bagnado fled Thailand to a neighboring country. So this Bagnado was wanted by authorities in two countries in connection with two separate murders and was on the run the second time. Bagnado was detained by the Cambodian authorities and was sent back to Thailand to face trial. The Pattaya court ruled that Bagnado was one of the people who killed Schneider. Bagnado was the fourth person sentenced to death for his alleged involvement. But a couple years later, he won the appeal and was released from jail. He was later extradited from Thailand to Australia where he faces another alleged role in the 2014 murder. The other man allegedly involved in Schneider's death, Gorad, had his sentence reduced from a original three years because he had cooperated with the investigation. According to a lawyer, Gorad was released after two years in jail as an accomplice to the crime. Now, Koch and his wife remain on death row. 
what happened next and how they reverse the death sentence is nothing but a miracle, I think. Maybe a bit disturbing if it's true. Does your son deserve to die? No. Does anyone deserve to die? But friends have reached out to Nine News proclaiming his innocence, saying Luke is a family man who loves his kids. When this first happened, he did everything he could to try and get them out of the country. He is innocent. He would never do something like this. I believe he has been set up to take the fall for someone else's mistake. It has been said that several Koch's associates are suspected of helping the police by giving them information and testimonies. One of the associates who was the main prosecution witness was a Australian offshore worker named Paul. Paul testified that Koch had hired him as a diver to go on three trips to look for gold that had been dumped offshore. On the third trip, on which they did not find anything, Paul said that Koch told him he was really looking for the drugs he had thrown overboard. Paul's testimony led to the convictions of Koch Garad and Koch's wife. All were sentenced to death. Okay, here's where it got really interesting and how Cook and his Thai wife got out of their death sentence. In 2019, remember the main prosecution witness, Paul, he was the former volunteer police officer in Pattaya who is now wanted on allegations of human trafficking women from East Africa into prostitution in Thailand. And this was around the same time that Cook and his Thai wife were appealing their case to the Supreme Court. The Thai Lawyer Police Human Trafficking Department issue a warrant for Paul's arrest. However, it is speculated that Paul somehow managed to flee the kingdom and was never brought to court. Although Paul testified, which led to the death sentence of Cook and his Thai wife, defense attorneys argue that Paul's testimony should be disregarded. After 19 months of consideration, the Supreme Court ruled that Paul's testimony was not credible. Since he is not a credible witness, the testimony given by him is no preponderous and it could not be admissible by the court. Okay, so that's a quote I found on this article and I find it pretty interesting that, that they use the word preponderous. I don't even understand what that means and I have to look that up. So anyways, in September 2021, Luke Cook and his Thai wife were freed from Thai jail after being found not guilty in Thailand's highest court. The case has been completely dismissed by the Supreme Court 19 months after the death penalty sentence from the Court of Appeals. After almost four years and six years behind bars, they are all out of prison, out of Thailand, and back home in Australia. The three other suspects alleged involved Schneider's death appear to have fled the country and were never caught or faced trial. So the drug cases in this country are very serious and as well as the rest of Asia with both public and legal opinion highly negative toward those involved in drug trafficking and other crimes. So for example, Schneider, who left Australia in 2012 after police allegedly connected him with two drug laboratories in Sydney, Australia, so he's an alleged drug dealer himself. There is no one I know or that I can find that is currently serving time for his death. And the people allegedly involved with his death they're free after a couple years in prison. To my opinion, his case appeared to be closed. If you get caught in Southeast Asia, you get a death sentence and the police can seize your properties, your cars, your cash. They can freeze your bank account. They may even look into your friends or relatives and see if they have any connection with your involvement. And if they do, they can go after them too and take their properties and money and that kind of stuff. And the thing is that that is the least of your problems. With all your money and your bank account seized or frozen by the authorities here, how are you expected to pay a lawyer or an attorney to defend yourself in a foreign country? I'm not sure exactly how that works, right? They put me in a car, um, put a bag over my head, and then took me back to um, one city called Padia. And yeah, what they, are they saying? They're just trying to make you sign papers. Sign this, sign this, sign this, sign this. You're like, this. no? I'm like, 
So if you watch all the way here, give this video a like. And uh, to watch another video that you will enjoy, click on one of the video on the screen right now.